Okay, we're going to dive into some CSS using Mozilla Thimble. I'd just like to remind you what we had done yes last week. Uh, we had opened the Thimble app and I had given you a template to work with. So remember the HTML is over here on the left and then this is the web page that shows up on the right. So what I did for this week is I just took that exact same content and I added some CSS around it. So you'll see that now we have some colors and some different fonts and we have a little layout stuff going on here. So we'll just look on this side at what's going on. Now I'll tell you because we're using Thimble we actually have to put the style um, sheet stuff with actually within the same document as HTML. Uh, when we're doing this on a website or when um, template managers are doing this for us they will have it as a separate style sheet. Uh, so you see we have the style tag and it goes all the way down to here and then here's our regular HTML showing up. So we'll start up here. So here's the body tag. So this is saying for default these are the things I'd like to happen. Now later on I might customize for particular things but in general I would like my font family to be Georgia, New Times Roman, Times or Serif. Now what that means is um, on the web Browsers don't have access to all the fonts that we might be used to having on our word processing applications like Word or something like that. Uh, there's limited fonts and so we have to provide multiple options in case a font isn't available. And if you go back to session two, um, you'll see web fonts and it actually shows you what are safe, um, traditionally safe fonts to use. Um, if you see fancy fonts on a website, um, usually you're going to see that that's an image file and not a text, actual text. So anyway, here I'm saying I'd like it to be Georgia first, and if Georgia's not there, then New Times Roman. And you see when we have a name that has spaces, we have to put it in quotes, times, and then serif. Also, I'd like my body text to be default white, and you'll see not all of it's white, so I must have something else going on. And then I want this background color, which um, you're like, well, what is that? Uh, I, how come I could identify text being a color name, but I couldn't identify it here? Well, it turns out, you know, there's way too many colors to identify with text names, so uh, somebody has figured out hex names for them. Again, if you go back to session two, um, there's a color picker website, and you can go along and find a color that you'd like to try out. And there's a hex value. I will copy that. Bring it over to my website and paste it in. Whew, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going to change it back. But anyway, you get the idea. You can go uh, play around with that. Okay, so that's the default stuff. But here for my header one, actually I want my default font to be Helvetica. And you'll notice that this is um, Helvetica font and this is Georgia font. And I also want that particular text to be a line center. So you can see that it is a line center. Going down, I'm saying I want my paragraph to be um, the color black. So there's my paragraph, and it's obviously not white like the default. These um, A tags are my anchor tags for links, and I can identify what the link color looks like, or what I'm just seeing it, what it looks like when I hover over it, and what it looks like if, a vi if I have visited it. And that's represented here. So the blues I haven't visited yet, the purple I have, and then as I scroll over um, the ones I haven't visited, it changes it to white. Okay, and then this is the part that I really have to wrap my head around because I'm used to doing this with tables. Um, but this is this part right here where I'm laying out two columns. And the way you do that with CSS is you identify, well, actually there's several ways, but the way I'm doing it is ident identified a wrapper. So there's one whole wrapper for this, which is this right here. And then I want that, I'm saying the width is 700 pixels across and 150 pixels up and down. Then this element, the first column, is picture. I want that be, to be 250 pixels across and 150 height. And I'm going to float it left, which means I want it to you know, float over here to the left-hand side of the screen. Then my next wrapper, I want to be 400 uh, pixels wide, so that's what this is. And I actually had to mess with the height a little bit because if I had it just 150, you see that's a little bit, it doesn't match up. So I just changed that number until it matched up with my image. And I also want to float that left. Now because it's all part of this wrapper, it floats it 
to the next um, float to next to the image. Then my style is done. So I've identified all the style uh, things I want to do. And this is my content. And you'll see I haven't actually changed any of the HTML tags, but I have added a few more things. So here is, um, so there's my header. And then here's the wrapper saying, okay, I'm identifying the space. And then I'm identifying the picture space. That goes here. And remember, I have to have my start div tag. There's another start div tag. I need an end div tag. Now I haven't ended this first div tag, so I'm ready to start another div tag to go for the next column. I'm going to end the, that div tag, and then I end the whole wrapper div tag. So that's how I got that to appear. And then we're just back onto HTML again. So I'd like you to try to go through these. Uh, if you've already got your own um, animal or whatever web page that you created before, then you can also go to that um, and edit it and uh, see what kind of fun stuff you can create. Good luck!